When I was a little girl, I remember standing in my yard almost every night, staring into the sky at a small red dot called Mars. I thought about what I learned in science class, about the robots that humans sent to study and explore Mars. They were pretty limited in how far they could travel along its surface, but the information they sent back transformed that red dot into an entire world. They revealed evidence of water on Mars from long ago and found organic compounds, the chemical building blocks of life, which suggested that it had possibly once been the home of tiny creatures. The most recent robot they sent in the 2020s continued in the search for evidence of past life on Mars, but it also had another goal, to help pave the way for the first generation of humans to land on Mars. Now I am one of those humans. As we approach Mars, the idea of landing on its surface still feels like a distant dream. The orbits of Earth and Mars around the Sun allow for a trek to the planet about every 26 months or so, which means round-trip missions can take anywhere from one to three years. For this mission, we will arrive back to Earth just after a year and a half from launch. It's surreal to know we will be the first humans to arrive to this world, and that we will lay the foundation for future explorers. A few of us might even return back to Mars. I've never really liked the colonial language that often clutters conversations about space exploration. This is not manifest destiny. This is the universe stretching its limbs a little further. We are knocking on our neighbor's door. One of the biggest questions is if there will be anyone there to answer. The atmosphere of Mars is 100 times thinner than Earth's. What's left of that atmosphere is 95% carbon dioxide. The average temperature of the planet is a frigid negative 55 degrees Celsius. If I let my imagination run wild, I can dream of encountering ancient fossils from another epoch that offer us a glimpse into what life was like on Mars when the lakes and rivers were abundant. If life does exist on Mars today, it's likely in the form of microbes that the previous missions have suggested tiny Martians scattered across the clay and soil on its surface. If we do discover life, we will know that the red point of light in our sky is living. How many other points of light might illuminate a kaleidoscope of life hidden in the sky? If there's life on Mars, I believe we should do nothing to disturb that life. But if we arrive at a barren world, we ourselves might learn to become its creatures slowly breathing life into the planet until that breath becomes its very atmosphere. Will we have learned from the harm we've caused the Earth? Sometime soon, I will find myself in a strange position. I will look into the night sky, but that red point of light that I love so much will have vanished. Instead, a blue point of light will glimmer above me delicately suspended among countless other twinkling lights. And as I look at that blue point of light, I will be looking at the home of every human being in the universe. And I will hope that someone, perhaps even a few people, will be looking up at that red point of light in their sky. And in that moment, we will see each other across the solar system. I will say, hello. <laughs>